Hi, welcome to class 8 Geography, Resources and Development. Chapter 2 Land, Soil, Water, Natural Vegetation and Wildlife Resources. In this chapter, we will read about the five major resources, natural resources, from which we get ample amount of things in life. It is not important to read this initial, this long paragraph. It's a small story created to grab your interest in the chapter. So let's go on to the more important aspects. So the first thing we'll read about is land. So it is the most important natural resources. It covers about 30% of the total area of Earth's surface. So remember 30 is land and 70 is water. And we also know that the land distribution throughout the world is uneven. That means not every place is the same. We have somewhere mountains, then we have plains, we have plateaus, we have fold mountains and other sort of mountains. And then we also have forest areas which is not much populated. So usually the plains and river valleys which are next to a river or, or a huge chunk of water, there the land is usually suitable for agriculture. Why? Because of the soil that comes with the help of river. And where there is agriculture, you can understand that there is going to be food and then businesses can uh, take place further. Therefore, these areas are the densely populated areas of the world. Now let's read about the usage of land. So we use land for agriculture. We have forest, mining, building houses, roads and setting up various other industries. The use of land is usually determined by the physical factors such as topography, soil, climate, minerals, availability of water. So if you see, even if you want to run a business on a particular place, there these factors are very much important because if there is no water, then you cannot run your own industry or some kind of a factory. And if the climate is not good, then probably you cannot grow a particular crop or any kind of good that supports that climate. And soil is also important if you are in the agriculture business, soil is a crucial thing. Just have a look at this table where the land used in selected countries are showcased. Just see how much India uses its land for crop purpose. 57% of area is under cropland. That's why we say India is an agrarian country where agriculture is the prime occupation. Now land is divided into two parts. It is a private land or it's a community land. So private land is those land where individual is the owner of it. Whereas community land is owned by the community for common uses like collection of fodder, fruits, nuts and medicinal herbs. So when you buy a plot to build a house, that falls under private land. And when you go to a place which is a public park or an amusement park, that is called community property resource. So we know population increases day by day. But on the other hand, land is limited. And then no two places have the same quality of land. And with the hunger of acquiring lands, people start encroaching the common lands to build up commercial areas like housing complexes in urban areas. And in rural areas, they cut down the forest for agricultural purpose. So because of all of this, uh, land degradation, landslides, soil erosion, desertification, these are the major threats our environment is facing. So you see, too much of everything is bad. We need constructional activities, we need strong houses. And on the other hand, we also need land for agricultural purpose because we need to feed large growing population. On the other side, if you see, it will cause a huge land degradation, landslides and soil erosion, which are very catastrophic. So you see how we need to balance both of the things. Now, when land is being used by such a big population, it is also a duty to conserve the land resource. Because you cannot just go on and start cutting the forest cover just because you need to grow agricultural land. Therefore, there has to be an authority which keeps a check on the land resources, whether how much of it is being used and how much of it is left out for the forest conservation. So let's quickly understand how soil is formed. So there are total five factors that affect the formation of soil. So the first one is the parent rock. Remember the rocky layer which is at the bottom of the soil. So that is responsible for the color and texture of the soil. And the next factor is the relief. So relief is nothing but the topography. In other words, what is the shape of the land? Whether it is in the high altitude area or a slope which determines the accumulation of soil. So just think about it. If your land is in an elevated form, then you will have most of your soil accumulated at the bottom part of the hill. That's why in the mountainous region you will find rocks on top and most of the soil is down. The third factor is the flora, fauna and microorganism. Because remember I spoke about humus. Humus is nothing but dead decay matter of plants and animals. So they are very important. They act like natural fertilizer. And the fourth important factor is time. So it takes a lot of time for a big piece of rock to convert into a nice 
thick layer of soil and it is possible because of weathering remember that and the last factor is the climate temperature determines rainfall and with the help of rainfall you can see the weathering process increases because if there is a lot of rain water will accumulate when water accumulates it wants to move here and there and when it moves it will carry a lot of soil along with itself so this was all about factors that affect soil formation so now let's read about what is soil degradation and how do we conserve it so soil degradation is also known as soil erosion they both are the same and the reason it happens is because of both human fault and nature's fault the important factors that lead to soil degradation are deforestation overgrazing overuse of chemical fertilizers or pesticides rain wash landslides and floods so now let's talk about some of the methods to prevent soil erosion so the first method is called mulching so suppose this is the land and these are the crops that are sown okay in between there are space so in that space you put a layer of organic matter so what it does is it helps in retaining the soil moisture because the plants which are already there they are sucking the moisture from the soil and in between because of the organic matter so you can say there will be a reserve of moisture which can be used by the plants later on the second method is the contour barriers so contours are nothing but making barriers sort of thing and here suppose here the plants are there you make barriers with the help of rock or soil so that when you pour water water stays in between and a third method is rock dam so if this is your land you put piles of rocks around it so it prevents gully formation because from these gullies the water goes out therefore it will not allow the soil to move from there fourth method it's called terrace farming so by the name you can figure out terrace farming so you see on a slope land you make terrace sort of things so that the soil doesn't go down and the water also remains there and the fifth method is intercropping suppose this is your land you're growing one crop here and then second crop here again the first crop and again the second crop so this method is called intercropping so what it does is these are grown at separate times so it will protect the soil from rain wash and the sixth method is called contour plowing suppose your land is an elevated land so contour plowing says you should plow parallel so when you put your crops here 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 what happens is the soil is not going to go down the water is not going to go down it's going to stay there because the crop will not allow the soil to move it will be held by its roots and the last method is shelter belts so in coastal areas you have a lot of air movement so what you do is if this is your land you will put long trees around it these trees will not allow the wind to carry the soil cover so the next topic we are going to talk about is soil soil is the thin layer of grainy substance covering the surface of the earth so the grainy substance refers to the small debris so if you take some soil in your hand and if you look at very closely you'll see small debris of rock which together form grainy substance and that is what is known as soil so soils are formed with the process known as weathering and if you need a fertile soil it should have a right mixture of minerals and organic matter so if you look at this figure this is pretty self explanatory so on top you have grass or crop or plant whatever that you sow and beneath that you have that small layer of soil which contains humus humus is nothing but dead matter dead decay matter of plants and animal and beneath that you have the subsoil with sand silt and clay and underneath that you have a weathered rock material weathered rock material is nothing but small pieces of rocks and at the bottom you have the parent rock which is a huge chunk of rock that is inside let's move on to the next topic water water is a renewable natural resource and 3/4 of the earth surface is covered with water the ocean water is however saline saline means salty and it is not fit for human consumption therefore the fresh water is only 2.7% which can be drinkable so there are two ways water comes one is through rain another is from melting of ice sheets and glaciers and even from these places only 1% of fresh water is available and which is fit for human use so fresh water is the most precious substance on earth because we drink that so water will never get over it will always be in earth but we are talking about consumable water or fresh water because that is what matters to us we are just going to drink that not the ocean water now we use water for so many other purposes like drinking washing then we use it in agriculture industries we also use it for generating electricity so as we said earlier population is increasing therefore we need to feed the rising demand by food production and cash crop so this all needs water and due to urbanization and rising standard of living there's a huge shortage of fresh water and the last topic of this chapter is natural vegetation and wildlife again no need of reading this initial text let's move on to the important one so when we say natural vegetation and wildlife we mean biosphere now what is biosphere it is a sphere where lithosphere hydrosphere and atmosphere comes in close contact so if you see lithosphere is nothing but the land on which we are standing 
and hydrosphere is all the water bodies and atmosphere is above the land and below the sky so when these three zone comes in contact we have biosphere so if you see in all of these three places we have living beings and they are interrelated on each other for survival for example we human we live on land but we need air to breathe that is the atmosphere we also need water to drink that is the hydrosphere yeah, therefore this life supporting system is known as ecosystem so ecosystem is nothing but a biosphere in which living beings are interrelated and interdependent on each other for survival. Now when we say wildlife, we include animals, birds, insects as well as the aquatic life forms because they give us so many things, milk, meat, wool. Just try to understand this ecosystem. The birds, they eat insects and when something eats someone, the one who ate is called a decomposer because things are going to be decomposed in their stomach. Therefore, animals, big or small, all are integral part of maintaining the balance in ecosystem. Now we'll read about the distribution of natural vegetation. So when we say natural vegetation, we mean the plants and the greenery. The growth of vegetation depends primarily on temperature and moisture because in order to have a green plant we need good temperature with good rainfall and moisture. So the major vegetation types of the world are forest, grassland, scrubs and tundra. Tundra is nothing but the cold region. So remember this when we say natural vegetation so only forest, grassland, scrubs and tundra falls into that category. Another strange thing is that wherever you see forests there you will have a lot of water supply and there the trees are also very huge. So tropical region is the place where you will find a lot of huge trees. That's why tropical evergreen forest, tropical deciduous forest they are very famous. So tropical region is the center of the earth the equatorial region now from this place as we go up that is towards the temperate zone or north pole there the size of trees decreases because there is no moisture if you notice during the winter season because of no moisture we will be in need of using a moisturizing cream so if you can remember that it's easy to understand now let's talk about the conservation of natural vegetation and wildlife believe it or not forest is a wealth they are very important in maintaining the ecosystem change of climate and human interference can cause the loss of natural habitat and because of deforestation, soil erosion, construction activities, forest fires, tsunamis and landslides, we are losing the balance of the ecosystem and that is in return accelerating the process of extinction of these great natural resources. And then hunting is another activity that is affecting animals like tiger, lion, elephant, deer, black buck, crocodile, rhinoceros, snow leopard, ostrich and peacock. So the only way to conserve them is by increasing awareness. So you see national park, wildlife sanctuaries, biosphere reserves are all made to protect our natural vegetation and wildlife. And to protect water we have conservation of creeks, lakes and wetlands. Human activities in several parts of the world have disturbed the natural habitat of many species. So most of the problems around us is done by us only. So there are many awareness programs and social forestry and one mohotsav that are done in school and community levels to encourage the awareness. And many countries have also passed laws declaring that the trades and killing of birds and animals are illegal. And there are a few in India as well. So if you care to read, just go on and read. So with this, we have come to an end of this chapter. It was a long chapter. As usual, thanks for watching. If you like the video, consider giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And make sure you are subscribed, you'll get an alert when my next video comes or if you want me to make anything specific, do let me know.